What's up, friends? Welcome into Fantasy Pros. It's Chris Welsh, and we are talking trades as we do on the Monday or Tuesday or whenever you're checking this out because we've always got awesome videos on here. So I don't know when you guys are diving in, but the best thing that you can do to make sure you don't miss any of it is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, put on those notifications because also those notifications can hook you up with awesome prizes. When you guys make comments in the videos on any of these videos, we've got prizes. So make sure you got the notifications to get you guys set up as well. Since we're talking trades, I want to remind you guys about my playbook. My playbook with the trade analyzer. Take these trades we're talking about or these players we're talking about. Go and put out some trades and see what the trade analyzer has to say. Plus waiver assistant and a ton more. Go and check it out today. My playbook over on Fantasy Pros. Work smarter, not harder. I've got five names. It's kind of a trade sell sandwich, a buy sell sandwich, if you will. I've got a buy. I've got a sell, sell, sell. And then the bottom piece of bread there is another buy. So here are five players. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but let's go. We are buying Arizona Diamondbacks starting pitcher, Brandon Fott. Oh, Welsh, you with your Diamondbacks. I know, listener and friend, but follow me here. Brandon Fott, numbers don't exactly blast off the page. I totally acknowledge that, but he has shown improvements across the board. But take this, his ERA, 4.17. Well. He has a full run lower expected ERA of 3.06. Batters, well, hard hit rate against him has dropped from 43 to 37%, as well as the barreling from hitters dropping like in half. Now, his strikeout rate is kind of maintained, and we'd love to see that get higher, but the best part is he's got a lowered strikeout rate, which has dropped to 4.5%. That's almost top 10 percentile of the league. By the way, on the strikeouts, five of his nine starts this year, he's actually put up six or more Ks, which is encouraging as the year goes on. And his last start, he had 11 strikeouts. So we may see a rise in that K percentage. His pitch mix overall has improved with the sinker, while his changeup has become even better. Fott's numbers, they're kind of middle-ish, but there is still a ton of upside out there. Homer Welsh aside, I say go buy Brandon Fott right now. Next up, we are selling a starting pitcher, we're selling Giants' Logan Webb. Webb's struggles were bad in the spring. He was like literally the worst starting pitcher in spring training. Joe Pizzapia would let everybody know about it. Now, he's had some rough points early on in this year, but he settled in with a 3.03 ERA. Very good. But I'm not buying it, though. And I'm looking to get out. He has an expected ERA of 4.84. That is almost two runs higher than his actual ERA. Now... What makes it worse? He's getting hit hard. A career high over 50% hard hit rate. His strikeouts, those are down 18%. And he was always kind of a solid command guy. Last year, just over 3% walk rate. This year, it's almost seven. In fact, last year, he only had nine games where he had two or more walks all season long. This year, through May 19th, he already has seven of those. And from a pitch mix standpoint, his changeup has really been his big problem. He throws that more than anything. This year, he's had to complement more of the sinker, which has lowered his strikeout rate because the changeup is less effective. He isn't getting the whiffs or more importantly, the chases on this pitch or any of these pitches that he used to, and it's making everything else worse. The solid ERA is a good selling point before things potentially blow up. I'm getting out of the Logan Webb business. Another sell in Tampa Bay. I am selling third baseman Isak Paredes. Paredes has just kind of been a unicorn. And sometimes there's those players that exist that it doesn't matter what any underlying thing says. They just still produce. That's kind of where Isak Paredes is right now. As he's hitting 304 with eight home runs as I record this video. While also having some of the worst expected numbers and overall underlying numbers supporting him bottom 30 percentile of the league expected batting average by the way he's hitting 304 an expected batting average of 238 one of the worst in baseball well below average expected slug and we just recently got the new bat tracking data from baseball savant well this is why he's such a unicorn he combines some of the worst bat speed with one of the longest swings in baseball. Luis Arise does not have great bat speed, but he has a shortened swing. This is both slow and long and paired 
with one of the worst hard hit rates in baseball, 27.7%. That's bottom six percentile of the league. Now he just keeps getting it done because he is barreling a little bit more than the year before, but I don't buy it. Take all of those things combined, and though he had a great year last year, he is back to not pulling the ball. 52.7% pull rate last year down to 44.6 this year with bad hard hit rates, a slow, big swing. Yes, he's hitting 304, but I don't know if it's going to last that much longer. So while those numbers are big, I am looking to sell. Of course, if you can, if someone's buying, I'm getting rid of Isak Briggs. One more sell for you, and it's another hitter, another third baseman. I am selling Cardinals Nolan Arenado. Now, there really might not be a ton to sell, but I'm not buying that it's going to get any better. So take that for however you want. He is hitting 275 and he's got three homers. So it's not a complete disaster pile. But Nolan Arenado is seeing a decrease across the board. His expected batting average is the lowest in the last four years at 262. Again, not the worst in the world, but it is paired with a career worst barrel percentage of 2.1%, a career worst hard hit rate of 29.4% and having some fun with that bat tracking data, he has one of the worst, maybe the worst comboed player besides like a Javier Baez, except check this out. Javier Baez swings the bat fast, one of the fastest overall swings on average, but a long swing. Nolan Arenado, well under the league average at 69.5% average bat speed. That is well below average with one of the longest swings over eight feet. So those two combos, though we don't know the bat tracking data is going to tell us this huge story. We know those are not good. Paired with a horrific hard hit rate, overall zone contact down as well, and swinging less in the zone. Father time might be getting to Nolan Arenado. So if there's still something to be had, I would be getting out. And my final one, I am buying Ronald Acuna. Yes, Acuna's year has been a struggle, at least comparatively. His homers are way down, only three home runs, 14 stolen bases, still great, but from a pace standpoint for him, not as great. And he's hitting only 247. Has people starting to wonder how much of a mirage last year might have been, which it's kind of silly. Underlying, there are still so many factors that are working in his favor. 50% hard hit rate, that's up. His barreling is down, but as far as how hard he hits the ball on average and max, those numbers still look great. One of the biggest problems has been his chasing, or as the Braves have called it, his pressing, because his strikeout rate, it's the highest it's been in five years, at just about 25%, where last year it was 11.4%. Pitchers have started changing their approach against Acuna this year. They threw the fastball 58% of the time last year where he hit 340. This year, it's up to 65% of the time where he's struggling. He's only hitting 226, whiffing a ton more. He whiffed only 14% of the time on fastballs last year. This year, with fastballs going up, he's whiffing 29% percent of the time. He's making way less zone contact as the fastball is eating him up. He's still hitting off-speed pitches. Breaking pitches are also a struggle. This again comes back to pressing. The positive is the EV numbers look the same except again for fastballs. So once he gets back adjusting to fastballs, we are golden. So why are you buying? Well, six weeks of this season, though is not nothing, is not enough for me to get off of the Ronald Acuna bandwagon. One thing that was brought up on the leading off podcast I thought was fascinating was would you trade your Ronald Acuna for Ellie De La Cruz or vice versa? Would you trade the red hot Ellie to get Ronald Acuna? And my answer is yes. Blind faith, yes. His expected batting average numbers are still in the top 30 percentile. Bat speed is great. The hard hit numbers still look good. He has got to stop striking out and change his approach to fastball. So this is me coddling him a little bit, but I'm a complete buy because it still is early-ish on the season. And this detox or pressing or whatever the Braves want to call it, it will turn around and we're going to get that Ronald Acuna month very, very soon. So I am a hard buy pretty much in any instance you can bring to me on Ronald Acuna. And there you go, friends. Those are the players that I'm buying and selling. And you know, it's not just research that gets me locked in to these players that I'm gonna put on these videos as far as buys and sells. Sometimes it's you guys, whether it's me seeing tweets from you about players, should I do this, should I do that? Whether you come in the live streams for leading off Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, and you're bringing these players up, or you're in the Discord. 
I get inspired to talk about these players because sometimes you might be like, why are we talking about Ronald Acuna? Because people are now in panic mode and I can gauge that by seeing the uptick in a lot of him coming up. And if you guys want to be a part of that awesome Discord, go and check it out. Fantasypros.com slash chat, where we do our home run calls. We've got rooms in each sport. We have special shows like Joe and I do cleaning up a Discord only podcast, if you guys want to check that out. So fantasypros.com slash chat. And make sure you go check out my playbook, trade analyzer, waiver analyzer, lineup assistant, and more work smarter, not harder with Fantasy Pros tools. Lastly, if you guys want to check out Joe Pizzapia and myself, do it. Leading off Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, every single day. We have a ton of fun, and you guys can start your baseball day off with us. And if you miss any of it, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel right here. Just hit that subscribe button, notifications. We'll tell you when we're live, and you won't miss any of it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Follow me on Twitter, X, at IsItTheWelsh, and I'll talk to you next time right here on Fantasy Pros.